Before we begin, I would like to encourage everybody that if you're new here, don't be shy to hit that subscribe button. I'm broken and obsessed in my otaku ways, and let's get on with the video. My last video was pretty serious, I'm not gonna lie. I almost teared up reading all of your comments because seeing all of you being able to tell me how you feel really means a lot to me. With that being said, I want to try to even out the feelings with the topic of today's video. So you have your anime with nothing but overpowered magic as well as the more realistic side trying to prove everything with science, but I think we may have found the perfect mix for it. This being the two-sided story of Railgun and Index. You see, when I first watched Index and it's just as good side story Railgun, I didn't really understand the hype for it. It seemed like every other power-hyped action fantasy that's been adapted way more times than I can count. Despite dropping it from season 1, more recently I got into it again, mostly for the fact of not getting why the fanbase would blow it to the high heavens with praise. With this being said, I found myself more involved with it than I ever imagined before. But there is a catch. You see, rather than being into Index as the main story, I found that Railgun was more intriguing to me, thus sucking me into it and unknowingly getting me hyped for the newest season, being a certain scientific Railgun T. I realized this show is a lot more than two people fighting with seemingly overpowered magic, and noticed that the power systems are a lot more than meets the eye. These people considered espers are humans that can access what some would call the sixth sense. And here's a little fun fact for anyone unaware. Originally in the light novel, these superpowered humans were referred to as ability users. But before the original licensing of a certain scientific railgun, the English-speaking audience called the ability users espers, and therefore it stuck. But the term esper does not automatically mean that these people contain ESP, or extrasensory perception, which is one of the classifications of power in Academy City. These espers could also be people that can manipulate objects in their surroundings, known as the superpower psychokinesis. Without having the extrasensory perception, espers are described by Index as individuals with talent, probably because it's not directly related to magic, like she personally uses. Now before you click off this video and think that it's absolute clickbait and bullshit, which I can completely understand because I've been rambling on for a little bit, I do have some updates about a certain scientific Railgun T for you guys. Railgun T is covering the end of Volume 7 in the manga all the way up to the present, and with Episode 12 being retelecasted and while we wait for Episode 13, and with Episode 13 to come out on the 24th, it was delayed due to reasons we are all aware of by now. But a new announcement has came out saying that we are getting Episode 13 and it's scheduled for May 1st. A preview of this episode has been released and it looks like we will be continuing the battle with Kamajo, Sogita, and Mikoto. While all of this is occurring, Misaka will be following Kihara to see what she is after. If you think we'll only be getting the usual 12 to 13 episodes, however, then guess again. With the previous two seasons containing 24 to 25 episodes each, we will be continuing on that same path with Railgun T as it is set to have a total of 25 episodes as well. Are you enjoying all of these new seasons as well as originals new adaptations this season? Let me know in the comments, I love hearing from you all. But back to the content. From initially not enjoying the series to being completely involved in researching the world around Academy City and the powers each specific individual has, seems like a huge jump, don't you think? Well, you'd be correct, and even though I said I prefer Railgun over Index, it doesn't mean it's not enjoyable for me, because trust me, it is. Now I'm going over all of this for two specific reasons. Number one is because the last videos I made were kinda sappy, and number two, I'm pretty pretty hyped for Railgun T, and it's been pretty fucking good so far in my opinion. From beating up random criminals on the street, to the Daihaisi festival beginning, Misaka seems to always have her hands full, and this season is no different. With the festival being open to the outside world, this means numerous people are plotting to get into the city. The world building of the side story of Misaka is just as good as a certain magical index. Going into detail about how power systems work has always kept me extremely engaged and interested, rather than having no clue of how the hell everyone just keeps powering up and acting like it's normal. Now before anything else, I would just like to talk about some of the world building and power systems in Railgun from past to present. Some facts that you may not have known about Academy City, you see. Academy City is roughly 30 years ahead of its time technology wise, with the main focus being school and research, yet it seems like outside the city, everyone is lacking even with modern advances because the Academy City seems to not share the information with the outside world. Another thing being that the city runs on one power, being placed in one of the windiest parts of Japan, thus not having 
trying to rely on fossil fuels and such, bringing them even further ahead of everyone else. Also, did you know that they have a fucking space program? Isn't that cool as shit? Not only does each individual government research space travel on their own, but anyone outside of that is pretty much out of luck, except Academy City, more or less showing us how much money they have to put towards their advances. One thing that is a drawback though, while they are ahead of their time, there are certain areas of research that are forbidden, one such thing being cloning. But while it is basically outlawed, we do know that Academy City does in fact have clones, therefore they must be going against at least some of the ethics of the outside world. Another cool thing I found while researching more about Royal Gun is that the entire city is a temple, and anyone who knows anything about Aleister Crowley is that he is very spiritual, thus it would make sense for him to build it to resemble something that he worships. I'm probably not done making all of the really, really sappy fucking videos, just saying, but it is nice to sometimes take a break from all of that, and just enjoy some power action fucking fantasy bullshit that you could just sit along and enjoy, and if you really want to, you can dig in and learn more about the world, the characters, and everything else, and that's why a certain scientific railgun, as well as a certain magical index, has been so entertaining for me this season, and the past seasons with the previous seasons. That's a lot of seasons. Now I personally want to know, do I have any other junkies of the fandom of Railgun and Index here watching this video? If so, let me know in the comments how you feel about this season so far, being Scientific Railgun T. Do you think they're following along pretty well with the manga and light novels? Because again, I haven't read them for a while, so if I'm wrong when I say that they have been doing a good job, feel free to fucking roast me in the comment section. If you enjoy this type of content and like more in-depth anime reviews as well as updates, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm broken obsessed in my otaku ways, and I will see all of your wonderful faces next time.